the Durban summit of BRICS leaders in March this year, a multilateral agreement on cooperation and co-financing for sustainable development was signed between the development institutions or exim banks of the BRICS countries. I'm going to discuss that and much more with TCA Ranganathan, Chairman and Managing Director of Exim Bank. So thanks very much for your time. Let's talk about the agreement I just referred to. What was the thrust of this agreement and what does this really mean for the role that Exim Bank is going to play under this agreement? Thank you. Thank you for speaking to me. BRICS conventions have been now been going on for the last four years and it was decided in the earliest session, the thing that the development banks of BRICS would also collaborate with each other. And we are meeting each other on the sidelines of the BRIC events for the, from nine, 2010 onwards. And when we are trying, thinking of talking to each other, we decided to collaborate with each other. And when you are collaborating and with your development banks, you basically have your national mandate, that is national development exercise. Mm. So when I am, my basic focus is development of Indian exports. Chinese would be Chinese exports. Why, how will we collaborate? Mm. So the, when we talked about it and we discussed how to go about the collaboration, we decided to go into certain aspects of collaboration which would be meaningful, mm. sensible and practicable. This year we signed this agreement on collaboration, on partnering with each other in technology and information sharing regarding sustainable development practices with the idea of giving to each other information of our experience on sustainable development models which we have seen in our country and they have seen in their thing and we can exchange and we can find out how to go about it implementing theirs here or ours there and also if we can help assist in each other in transfer of technology on a voluntary basis that also would be one of the items of collaboration because when you're talking about sustainable development, the models of sustainable development would depend on which sector of the economy you're working in. Yes. And each real economy has a variety of sectors. Mm. So the, it's not necessary that any one country has a monopoly of information on what is a good practice or a best practice in every sector. So sharing and exchanging information is good and it's mutually beneficial. So um, that is what will happen. Okay. We're here at Sankalp, which is a gathering of social enterprises apart from impact investors and other stakeholders in this space. Uh, does any of what was agreed upon at uh, the Durban summit uh, tie in or uh, sort of support in any way the sustainable work that um, social enterprises here in India are doing? Does this mean anything for them in any fashion? To start off, I was very impressed with this unconvention summit and I was very impressed that it has been going on for the last seven, eight years. I think it's a great forum and I think such forums need to be encouraged. It helped in mature, beginning to flotation and development a large number of Indian organizations, especially in the social sphere and the unorganized segment. When we talk of collaboration between nations, the uh, initial items of collaborations are on the governmental levels, mm. they mean, then they come down to institutional and corporate levels. Mm. So the bulk of and the thrust would be on where it is practical and relevant for nations to in, in exchange with each other. And we're talking large projects here. And perforce when nations intersect with each other, it will be large projects. Mm. Small projects, especially that of social business, do not require great amount of cooperative effort between two nations. It can be done on a much lower level and Exim Bank has been assisting the non-formal sector in its efforts to internationalize on an auto basis regardless of what's happening in BRICS and other things. Fair point. But the BRIC forum is very useful for, in another manner, it provides a platform for nations to get together and to agree to collaborate. And when you start collaborating, the range of collaboration keeps widening and deepening. And people become more receptive in each of these countries to ideas and institutions of the other country in getting them over or learning from them. And that degree of in 
interest and that openness which starts coming in into society would help institutions like this. And this Sankalp forum, which was this called unconvention, is actually an international convention because I saw a lot of delegates from overseas, yes, from various countries. And I think as this thing progresses and as the BRIC nations keep increasing the collaborations, you'll find a lot of BRIC delegates also coming in and maybe Indian delegates going out to similar conventions and conferences held by them. And so, so there's will, a cross-fertilization will happen, will of ideas. You know, uh, the reason I'm asking is because I'm leading up to what was under discussion, up for discussion at Sankalp today, which was in the context of social enterprises and the goods and services that they deliver to people at the bottom of the pyramid, is there room for a South-South collaboration? India-Africa collaboration comes to mind. Of course, Afghanistan is also on the table. But, um, you know, is it fair to say at this stage that there's room for collaboration at this level in this space, social enterprises in particular? See, when you're talking of social enterprises, there are two aspects to a social enterprise activity. One is the business model and uh, ideological orientation. Second is the goods and services they deal in. Now, goods and services they which they deal in moving in a large manner out requires certain scale of operations which only a few social organizations in the country are today capable of. And some of the classic successful social organizations I would say is Amul. It is also a social business organization which has become hugely successful. IFCO and Kripco, the fertilizer giants, they are also social business organizations. And as and when the social organization, business organizations become viably big in scale, then their efforts to go abroad in a pro sending across the goods and services would become doable so there. But the ideation and the business model is a different cup of tea. The ideation and business model is basically a sharing experience and experience the thing on how to go about it and overcoming the environmental handicaps in dealing with situation. That experience transfer also can happen. And I think but that a lot of that is beginning to happen. Th that will happen. But when it the extent of the potential would depend on the country in Africa which you are talking about. Because, you know, there is one aspect about Africa, which is a very common error of thought process in India, that we think of Africa as Africa. It is a continent 10 times larger than India in geography and 55 nation states. And if it's 10 times larger than India in geography, the distances are 10 times larger between these states than what you think in India. And if you look at India and you take two states, which are neighbors, say Orissa and Andhra Pradesh, how much variation there is? And can a Odia social this thing dialogue easily with coastal Andhra or interior Andhra? And if it is successful in coastal Andhra, will it be necessarily be successful in So the sense I'm Andhra? getting from you is that, you know, when we're talking about collaboration at the social enterprise level, it's not going to be as easy as India-Africa potential for collaboration because there are huge uh, uh, sort of differences in different parts in different nations within Africa. So let's not overstate yes. uh, the scope for collaboration. The headline grabbing news, I'm coming back and excuse me for doing that. I'm coming back to Durban. The headline grabbing news was, you know, the BRICS bank. And there's yes. still not much clarity on the funding mechanism, the mandate of the bank. Is there anything that um, you can share with us that will offer some insights? You see, what happened is about in the previous BRICS summit, there was a realization among the leaders that the need for infrastructural investment in each of the BRIC countries is very large. In India, we have for the next five years, a this thing that we must invest about $1 trillion in infrastructure, that is almost $200 billion. Various countries in Africa have bought an estimated about 90 odd billion dollars. Brazil has uh, this thing requirement of investing in infrastructure of excess of about 80, 90 billion dollars. 
China has its own, Russia has its own. And the existing institutional frameworks for investment are proving to be less than optimal because any institution in today's world has a requirement of exposure norms, concentration risks, and various other prudential banking requirements. And when de developing countries start have expressing desire for so much amount of investments, those norms start getting breached. And goodwill notwithstanding, it's difficult for institutions to accommodate such large requests. And hence so the genesis hence of you this require, idea. Hence you require more institutions and hence this idea came up. When this idea came up, it met with automatic receptivity because this need is genuine, need is paramount, everyone understands, everyone needs. But when you set up an institution in countries as disparate as China, Brazil, India, Russia, we are all in separate continents, you know, different you know, than India and China are neighbors, but our economic structures are different, our business models are different. Then comes the how do we set up the, the thing and what is the structure of the organization and what will be the framework of rules of all this thing, what will be the procurement rules, what will be the location like, what will be the staffing pattern like, what will be the picking order. So that has been undergoing several rounds of discussion among the finance minister level. And the finance ministers of the five governments have been meeting continuously for the last one and a half this year. There, and they have come to a certain level of understanding. And in this BRIC summit, it was announced that they have arrived at a broad understanding of the board capital structure. But it will and probably require a lot of fine tuning so still. They will have to work down this year there. If you look at what the international experience of setting up such institutions is, World War I ended in 1919. It was decided that reconstruction of Europe requires a development institution. Twenty years lapsed and the Second World War broke out and that institution did not come up because people were still talking to each other. And right. After the Second World War, when the sec again the topic of reconstruction of Europe came up, World Bank was set up in very good time, fast. Mm. Because in the meantime, in the previous twenty years, a lot of progress, progress had, been, had made. been made. Right. Now, how much time is taken to come up to that level, you cannot therefore predict. Mm. We have already spent one and a half years. Maybe the leaders will agree to it in the next six months yes. or next four months. Maybe but it, it might take, take, a, may take longer. longer. And not being privy to the discussions at that <laughs> level is difficult to conjecture, but it can happen very fast. It can take its time. Okay, Mr. Ranganathan, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.